Hey, hey, everybody. Today, we're going to take a quick look at the positive externalities of production graph. Just the diagram. This is part of market failure. It's one of the four externality forms of market failure, and it's the positive externalities of production. So what does that mean? We'll break down the words. The production of something is going to cause an external benefit, because it's positive, to something else. And the example that we would use, right, um, would be something like education. Like if a firm trains a teacher in IB economics by sending them off to an IB training and then they go to another international school, that school benefits from this external um, education. That, that, be, from the, that school benefits from the education of that teacher that they received at the previous school. The new school doesn't pay for that. They just get the benefit along with hiring the employee. So what would that look like? So to start off with... The positive externality of production curve looks like this. And when it's production, you got to know, oh, yeah, whether it's a negative externality of production or positive externality of production, what is going to shift is the old supply curve, which is the marginal social cost curve and the marginal private cost curve. Okay, so when you have production, it's going to be the old supply curve. When you have consumption, it's going to be the old demand curve, which is now called the marginal social benefit and the marginal private benefit curve, okay? But here we go. Positive externalities of production. That means that the marginal social costs are going to be um, greater, actually, than the marginal private costs. How do we know that? Well, because the production of, let's say, um, high-quality training for employees, the example of a, tr of a, a teacher going off and going to IB training, What's going to happen is that that is that the marginal private cost, the cost to the school who sends a teacher off to training, right, is going to pay for the training. But the marginal social cost, the benefit to society as a whole as a result of having a teacher, one more teacher trained in IB economics is going to that's going to be a benefit to society. So what we're going to see is actually the marginal social cost curve moving downward and the marginal private cost remaining where it is. So let's take a look at that. So here it is. Check it out. So as a result of the training, the marginal private cost, the firm paid this price, P1Q1. But as a result of the training, the person who receives the training, there's actually an entire benefit to society and that benefit to society is represented in this triangle right here, marked in green. Right. So when a private firm pays a teacher, a school pays a teacher to go off and get training, they are incur incurring the cost. But the benefit of society is actually a, um, shown by moving the marginal social cost curve down. So the optimal point of the social efficiency would be point A. And so governments are going to get involved and figure out how do we get all of that benefit, right, in the marketplace? What do we do? How do we get closer to point A and take advantage of this potential welfare gain of another trained teacher? So let's take a look at that. They basically have two solutions, right? In a free market, it's up to the government to rectify this situation, and they could subsidize firms that offer training. So if Nido de Aguilas, which is where I work right now, were to send me off to training, then they maybe could get a subsidy from the government, the Chilean government, to do that, and that would incentivize them to do it more. Or they could provide, the government itself could provide vocational training to teachers, let's say. And the result of that would look like this. It would be any movement of the of the marginal private cost curve downward and taking up any portion of this pot potential welfare gain that's marked here in the green triangle, right? If they were to subsidize this, um, the, the training of teachers, then you would get something like this where you would have the MPC plus the subsidy, right? And what that would do is create a new market equilibrium that would be closer to that magical point A, right? So this may be P3 over here, and this would be Q3 down here. And you would see that what would be left is that the only a potential welfare gain that's left would be this small triangle there. And by subsidizing a particular firm that sends its teachers off to training, um, the government could push and take advantage of the welfare gain entirely. 
Okay, I hope you thought that video was helpful, and we'll talk to you in a bit.